Hey everyone, in this video, I want to talk about Azure Carbon Optimization. Because today, many companies, yes, they're focused on the financial cost of their organization, but they're starting to care also about their environmental cost. Specifically, we think about the carbon footprint. And as a company, if I'm using cloud resources, how do I know what that carbon footprint is? How do I know what steps I can take to improve it? Now, some companies want to know this just for their own purposes and doing the right thing and thinking about how they can offset that carbon footprint. Some may have certain regulatory requirements to reduce that carbon footprint. And so if I'm using the cloud, well, how do I know they're not my direct resources running on-prem in physical things? Now, there are existing solutions. There's things like the Microsoft Sustainability Manager. That's a SaaS app that tracks the environment, the social, the governance goals around the company, which is not just for Azure, that helps to track other stuff as well. There's the Emissions Impact Dashboard. Now that is just for Azure and Microsoft 365 reporting. That's a set of Power BI dashboards. That's obviously Microsoft only. But a lot of those resources are used by different levels of people within an organization. What we now have is the Azure Carbon Optimization capability that is just part of the Azure portal. Now, because it's part of the Azure portal, this is not gonna be used by C-level executives. They don't play in the Azure portal. This could be used by IT admins, used by developers to understand that carbon footprint. And this would be complementary to things like that emissions impact dashboard. Now, when I think about this, and we'll go down and play with this, today it's based on the RBAC roles that I have at the subscription level. So there's not going down to resource group levels today. I need to have the permissions at the subscription level. That may change in the future. But it is gonna give me resource level carbon emissions reporting. It's gonna give me recommendations. So when you think of, hey, normally we think of financial cost recommendations to reduce financial cost, well, now it's gonna give me carbon footprint cost and ways to reduce that. And today it's focused on virtual machines and virtual machine scale sets, but again, that will probably build out in the future. And it's really about actionable things we can do. It's about reduction actionability. That's its focus. I think about management and optimize, that's where this is gonna play. And I think the best way to understand this is if we just some spend some time in it. So here I'm in the portal. Now what I, I search for, if you just type in carbon optimization, it's gonna pop up and we can dive in and start using it. So here I'm in the emission trends. So there's really three key areas we think about this. Emission trends, emission details, and then reductions. So trends, as an organization, what am I seeing in terms of my carbon footprint? Now I can absolutely export these out to a CSV file. There's also API access to this. I can select multiple subscriptions at once. I can pick the resource group. I can pick the emissions type that I want to focus on. You'll see this scope one, two, and three. So when you think about the scope one, two, and three, scope one, is what's generated directly and released into the air. You might think about, hey, if I'm driving my car, that would be a type one. Data centers could be generators, uh, the cooling. Type two is, well, I'm using electricity. Well, that electricity in turn is generated by power plants that has indirect emissions. And then the type three is emissions based on the life cycle of the product, making the motherboard, making the server, its transportation, its disposal. So those three different emission types I can track as part of the dashboard. Now what you see straight away is my trend. So I can see here my monthly emissions over kind of that one year period. I can see the trend in what I'm doing and it's breaking it down by the three different scopes. Um, that we have in the environment. I can see my total carbon emissions. I can see it for the last month and I can see why I'm down. So I've got a nice green, I'm down 0.8%. I 
I can see potential monthly emission reductions. So there's opportunities here that I can reduce that. Then what I can see is more detail on my last month. So it's showing me, hey, exactly what am I doing by different types of resource. Obviously virtual machines is the key type. Virtual machine licenses, storage, Azure Firewall functions, some other things here. The locations where I'm using it. I see my carbon intensity. So think of the carbon intensity as the emissions in context of cost. Uh, if you think about, hey, my cloud use overall, if I'm using more cloud, then obviously I'm gonna produce more carbon. But if the intensity starts to drop, well, that's good. It means based on the amount of cloud I'm using, the actual carbon emission is proportionally going down. So I'm being more efficient, I'm having less carbon generated based on the amount of cloud I'm doing. So that carbon intensity is a really good gauge of, sure, I might be using more cloud, so obviously my, my overall emissions is probably going up, but if my carbon intensity is going down, well then that's a positive thing. I'm taking the right steps to reduce that carbon footprint proportional to the resources I'm using. And then you see these top reduction opportunities. So there's things about well, changing the SKU of various VMs, deleting virtual machines. And obviously these will typically also have a cost element to them as well. And then I can dive over to my emissions details. Now this is where initially it's my subscription level. So once again, I can see over a period of time my emissions by subscriptions, but then I could also look at it by resource group. I could look at it by resource. So now we can see the actual resources using it. I could do it by the types of service and by location. And so I can get the details of all of the different things I'm actually using and then start to understand, well, okay, where can I go and do optimization around this? And then I can absolutely think about, well, how can I do those reductions? And so now it's gonna give me a list of what I could do and it's gonna show me the emissions reductions and obviously there's cost savings as well. A lot of these things are about shrinking the resources, deleting resources. So yes, it will reduce my carbon footprint, but it will also save me money. It shows me equivalents of, hey, this type of emissions, well, it's these many trees, how many light bulbs, trash bags, and so we can see exactly what that impact is. If I go back to the emission details, well here you see those same equivalents. So carbon emissions for last month, I can see the equivalents of homes, smartphones charged, gallons of gasoline consumed. So just additional information to give you an idea of exactly what those proportions of those emissions are for but really the goal is to give me actionable things. And that's what these reductions are. It's showing me a whole list of things that I can do to improve that carbon emission. And yes, it's gonna save me money as well. And that's its focus. So the focus is what are those biggest ticket items that give me the most bang for the buck in terms of being able to go and make reductions to my emissions but overall, it will show me what that footprint is and I can see, hey, how I'm trending around that. Um, and it just helps me as an organization be able to report on what I'm doing in terms of carbon emissions, but also progress I'm making to make it better. So that was it. Uh, as always, I hope this was useful. Till next video, take care.